Hey, Pastor Brett here, and we come to the book of Numbers in our three-year journey through the entire Word of God. Next, we will go to the Gospel of Mark after this, but now we're in Numbers, and the reading assignment for this particular week was Numbers chapters 1 through 12, and I have landed right in the middle of that in Numbers chapter 6 with a message I'd like to share with you on the last few verses of number 6. Let me read it to you. Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. And as I read this, I want to ask you to be reflecting upon this question. What is God's disposition toward you? What is God's disposition toward you? The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Now according to Leviticus chapter 9 verse 22, the Aaronic blessing, this is what this is called by some, the Aaronic blessing, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N-I-C, blessing, Aaron's blessing upon Israel. As the high priest, he's blessing them. This blessing comes only after the sacrifices were made to cover their sins. In other words, Aaron the high priest brought the various offerings and sacrifices before the Lord in the Holy of Holies to provide atonement for God's people, then he would say this blessing upon them. Why is it significant that I share that with you? Because here is what the scriptures teach, that for the Lord's disposition to be positive toward us, we have to first have our sins forgiven. The Bible teaches that the Lord is angry with sinners. The Bible teaches that he is storing up wrath for the day of judgment, that if you are standing before God, On the day of judgment, which you will do someday, and I will do someday, on that day that the Bible talks so clearly about that future day of judgment when all of humanity will be judged, every single person who has ever lived will be judged on the day of judgment. On that day, if you are in sin, that is, if you have guilt of sin, you will be judged for that sin. And God is angry, and he has stored up wrath to be poured out upon sinners. On that day of judgment. But if your sins are forgiven, you will not receive any wrath from God. Instead, his anger is not there. Instead, his disposition is positive. It's a shining face. It is welcoming us into his kingdom for all of eternity. This is what the Bible teaches, and this is the future that everyone has to face. And so, forgiveness comes first, and then the Lord's pleasure comes second. His blessing upon your life, his favor upon your life comes because you've been forgiven. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. We embrace the name of Christ. When we're born again, we become Christians. We now belong to Jesus and His God is now pleased with us. The Father is now pleased with us. The Bible teaches that there's an exchange that takes place. This is grace. It's not anything we earn. But we receive God's favor and blessing because of what Christ has done for us. Christ went to the cross in our place. He took our place. He received the wrath and judgment of God upon him on the cross that we deserve for all of eternity. But Christ took that upon himself on the cross for us. And we receive forgiveness of sin because of that. This is the, the final Uh, sacrifice, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is the fulfillment of all the Old Testament scriptures and prophecies and promises, and, and he is the fulfillment of all the Old Testament sacrifices that pointed forward to the one Lamb of God. John the Baptist said in John 1, 29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus takes away our sins so that God doesn't hold them against us, and we are now forgiven so that his face now shines upon us. With that in mind, let's just think through some of these phrases that's used here. The Lord bless you. 
The Lord is the source of all blessings. Growing up in church, we sang a song every week at the close of our the end of our Sunday morning worship service. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. All blessings flow from God. Another hymn writer inviting us to experience God's presence on Sunday morning says, Come thou fount of every blessing. God is the source of all blessing. Paul wrote to the Ephesians, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ. The Lord bless you. And then he says, and keep you. Christ keeps us. In John chapter 10, Jesus tells uh, about how we are his sheep, and he's the good shepherd, and he, he keeps us, and no one will snatch us away from him. He says he, he, he holds us in his hand, and then the Father also holds us in his hand. And the picture there is we're in the hands of Christ who's in the hands of the Father. We are secure. No one will, will take us away. We have keepsakes, don't we? We talk about the word keepsakes, things we keep because they tie us to a memory from the past. Well, we are God's keepsakes as believers. God keeps us for the sake of Christ because of what he did in the past on the cross of Calvary. The Lord bless you and keep you. He is going to keep us. He's not, never going to leave us nor forsake us. He doesn't toss away. He doesn't sell us. He does his hand, hand us down to somebody else. Okay, We don't keep everything. We have all our stuff. We, we, over a lifetime, we, we maybe only keep a few things over a whole course of our lifetime. Most of it we, we sell or we, we trade or we, we throw away or we hand down to someone else or we donate to Goodwill or charity. Or, you know. But God keeps us. We're so valuable to him because of what Christ did for us. He keeps us. The Lord, next phrase, the Lord make his face shine upon you. I love this. This is my favorite phrase in this blessing. The pleasure of God. God is smiling at you. I asked you at the beginning, what is God's disposition towards you? I'm telling you, my friend, this is great news. This is good news. If you belong to Jesus Christ, his disposition toward you is joy, is happiness. He's smiling at you. His face is shining upon you. Next phrase, and be gracious to you, recognizing that this is all by God's grace. We're, we're saved by grace through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't earn it, okay? God is not shining his face upon us because we're good kids and we've obeyed. No, we've all stumbled in many ways. We've, we, we do things that aren't right. We, we mess up. But God is still pleased with us because of Christ, and he is gracious to us. It's not, it's not something we earn. It's because we belong to him and we're his children. It's not earned. He's being gracious to us, and he'll continue to be gracious to us. Next phrase, the Lord turn his face toward you. This, this to me, uh, reminds me that he has not turned his face away from me. He's not giving attention elsewhere. His attention is always on me. His eye is on the sparrow. I know he's watching over me. His face is upon me. And so it's like the Lord turned his face toward you. Wherever I'm at, wherever I go, the Lord's face is always turning in my direction to look at me. Not because he's neglecting anyone else. No, he does this for all his children. You don't have to worry that God has forgotten about you, dear child of God. You don't have to worry that, that God is neglecting one of his children and that child is you. No, his attention, his smiling face is always upon you. Always turning to wherever you are, whether it's in a, whether you're in a good place spiritually or whether you're not in a, in a not so good place spiritually, he's still looking at you, smiling at you. He loves you. Final phrase and give you peace, shalom. The absence of conflict. Yes, we think of the word peace. We think absence of conflict. That's true, but it's more than that. It's also a full wholeness, wellness. Shalom. The Lord give you peace. When the resurrected Jesus Christ appeared to his disciples, they were in a room with shut doors and suddenly he appeared. This resurrection body had the ability to go through walls. He appeared to them. First thing he said to them, peace be with you. A couple of verses later, this is in John chapter 20, he says, and again, Jesus said, peace be with you. A week later, he again shows up in a room where the doors were shut. What's the first words out of his mouth? Peace be with you. I have come to bring you peace. The fruit of the joy is love, joy, peace. 
We have the peace of God in us. We don't have to ask God to give us peace when we're anxious. It's already there. We just ask God to give us the eyes of faith to, to see and believe that we have his peace and that we would walk in it because Christ has given us this peace. He is our peace. What a wonderful blessing. These, this We have this. When we pray this for believers today in the New Covenant, we're not asking God to do these things. He's already done them for us through Jesus Christ, and we have these things. He blesses us. He keeps us. His face shines upon us. He's gracious to us. He turns his face toward us at all times, and he gives us peace. What a wonderful passage. What a wonderful blessing. It's a blessing that we have in Jesus. God does all things.